Consider this scenario. At a mere nine years old, an extraordinary event is poised to unfold within the narrative of her life. This tale unfurls amidst a familial outing, a meticulously arranged family picnic orchestrated by her father and his close confidant, amidst their extended kin and a handful of intrepid individuals. Their chosen rendezvous, a serene lakeside where her father diligently constructs a cottage. This day resembles a pristine canvas, brimming with the anticipation of exploration, exuding an electric atmosphere charged with palpable excitement. Initially, their plans pivoted from the ordinary, a planned picnic, to an unexpected voyage, propelled by a spontaneous invite from Bob, an agent of unforeseen change. This diversion alters their trajectory from Ottawa to the uncharted shores of a breathtaking lake, a haven of unexplored possibilities. The pristine allure of this unfamiliar locale beckons, suggesting an impending escapade beyond the ordinary. Awash in the morning sun's warm embrace, the men channel their energies into a construction endeavour, while the children, brimming with anticipation, eagerly await an afternoon boat excursion. During a respite by the shoreline, her father and a select few seize the moment, joining the crew embarking on this aquatic escapade. While they linger on the water's edge, the remaining group, comprising Bob, his spouse, their two young children, her mother, three siblings and herself, embark on a modest fishing boat designed for a mere five individuals. Thus commences their aquatic odyssey, yet fate, as it often does, holds alternative designs. As the vessel navigates the waters, the engine stutters, triggering a calamity, the boat capsizes, plunging them into perilous depths. Astonishingly, none among them possesses the skill to swim. A providential twist spares her brother, owed to a snugly fastened fox leather jacket, preserving air and serving as an impromptu life preserver. Astonishingly, she clings to him underwater. An act of heroism unfolds, an ardent search and rescue operation to salvage the imperiled passengers. When finally hoisted from the water's grasp, she lies motionless. Fortune, it seems, aligns with their plight. A bystander, recently enlightened by a CPR demonstration on television, steps forward with audacity, hoping to reclaim her from the brink. A collective effort, bordering on the miraculous, breathes life back into her beleaguered frame. Yet, her ordeal during this critical juncture deviates from the conventional tales of celestial light or ascendant stairways. Instead, she finds herself ensconced within a dimly illuminated chamber, populated by enigmatic figures. It mirrors a familial gathering, an emanation of love where each soul shares an intimate bond. A convergence of cherished companions exuding inexhaustible affection. The ambience envelops her in a snug cocoon of warmth, akin to basking beside a crackling fire under a beckoning quilt. Enveloped in awe, she experiences an unfamiliar surge of contentment. Unexpectedly, a familiar voice resonates across the expanse, the voice of her departed grandmother, whose physical presence departed a year earlier. With a tender reassurance, her grandmother imparts that her departure from this world is yet to come, urging her to return. As she grapples with the internal tug of war between staying and departing, another voice interjects, her father's. He implores her to return, entrusting her with the solemn duty of tending to her mother. Reluctantly yielding to her father's entreaty, she rouses in an unfamiliar space, bereft of its customary comforts, her voice reaching out for her mother. In addition to her fervent need to convey the enigmatic revelations gained from her sojourn in an otherworldly domain, she delves into the intricate tapestry of her reminiscences. She revisits the instances when the propulsion of the boat faltered, perilously imperiling the vessel on the aqueous expanse. 
As the ingress of water commenced, both her mother and confidant Nora were engulfed by trepidation, striving to evade the looming catastrophe. Unbeknownst to them, their actions inadvertently precipitated the overturning of the boat. Complicating matters, none aboard the vessel possessed the skill of swimming, encompassing not only Bob, but also her mother, Nora, and Bob's progeny, who had yet to acquire this aquatic proficiency. Nora found herself grasping one extremity of the capsized vessel, while her mother clung to the opposite side. Two diminutive offspring were positioned atop the inverted boat, counterbalancing its inclination to submerge. Her sibling, Debbie, found herself ensnared within Nora's clasp on one side, desperately clutching the precarious lifeline proffered by the upturned vessel. Meanwhile, she and her brother were marooned farther away from the overturned craft, beyond immediate accessibility. Amidst the pandemonium, Debbie's apprehension overwhelmed her, leading her to latch on to Nora. Tragically, this action sealed Nora's fate. Upon the realization of the gravity of the predicament, her father and two other valiant individuals hastened to the scene for assistance. Swiftly procuring another boat, they embarked on a perilous rescue mission to salvage as many lives as feasible. Despite the harrowing ordeal, they made the agonizing decision not to return her mother to the precarious boat, fearing another calamity. Sanding the alarm, while Nora was promptly retrieved, it took over 48 hours to extricate her father and sibling. This heart-rending narrative epitomizes her father's profound adoration for his kin. Upon discovery, he cradled her sibling in the water, an ultimate display of paternal devotion. Days elapsed, approximately two to three, before she was reunited with her mother. Accompanied by one of her uncles, they journeyed back to the city, anxiously anticipating the somber tidings. Her mother bore the excruciating burden of imparting the dolorous news that her father and Debbie had transitioned into everlasting denizens of those waters, victims of the calamitous boat mishap. Nora, too, met a melancholic demise in the watery embrace. Her father, despite his initial proximity to the shore, traversed the perimeter of the lake indefatigably, surmounting impediments before succumbing to the aquatic abyss. Three existences, ensnared in an unremitting and catastrophic sequence of events, slipped away, leaving an indelible imprint of profound trauma. A remarkable sequence of occurrences unfurled in her existence, commencing with a close encounter with mortality during her tender years. Some might attribute it to providence or destiny, yet for her, it constituted a pivotal moment that profoundly moulded her essence. This significant episode unfolded in her youth and kindled a potent affinity with faith. Around the juncture of nine or ten years, she embarked on her odyssey through Sunday school, igniting a profound spiritual affinity. This encounter left her imbued with a potent, enigmatic sensation of affection. Whether it transpired as a reunion with departed familial entities or the machinations of a transcendent force, it left an enduring impression etched within her heart and psyche. The enigma within this chapter left an indelible mark on her, shaping an unyielding devotion to divinity and a lifelong dedication to altruism. Another encounter with the enigmatic unfolded in her twenties amid her tenure as a nurse. Her wisdom tooth predicament necessitated extraction, yet her asthma rendered conventional dental procedures perilous. Consequently, she was slated for day surgery entailing a daunting two-hour expedition from Ottawa due to interminable queues at local medical facilities. The procedure seemed promising, but she had a cardiac event in the post-op recovery room while under anesthesia. She was confused by the medical team's frantic efforts and enigmatic conversations. She quickly regained consciousness and asked the doctor about heart failure. His face showed confusion as he denied the idea. He left quickly, 
leaving her with a cryptic memory of her unusual encounter, which was unlike her usual medical crisis. The attending physician and her mother doubted her account of this profound event. However, her nursing career involved bedside care for the dying. She became a comforter, offering words and care. She often had quiet conversations and recitations with these people. She was convinced she saw a soul leave at the exact moment of their transition twice. It started as a brief haze from their body near the heart, dispersing into the atmosphere. She saw the loquacious spirit separate from their body in the next instance, which was more vivid. These experiences inspired her to become a death doula, guiding spirits to the afterlife. She taught about overcoming mortality fear. The body is just a temporary vessel for the soul. She passionately advocated for a greater respect for all human lives, including the homeless. Unless otherwise stated, she respected everyone as a nurse. Her interactions on public transit and in busy public spaces were infused with her belief in human connection. She knew even the smallest gestures, a kind word or a shared conversation, could bring smiles and brighten even the darkest days.